Okay, take your Bible tonight, turn to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're preaching a new message tonight out of 1 Timothy, and uh, we're preaching a message entitled, The Great Escape. 1 Timothy 6, verse 11, we'll be dealing with part 1 tonight, and it says this, 1 Timothy 6, 11, But thou... O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Let's pray and we'll get into this. Thank you, Lord, for the evening. Now, Lord, help us to glean the wonderful truths that are found in this portion of 1 Timothy. Help us to take the Bible principles that are found here and put them into practice in our life. Help me as I preach, unloose my tongue and help me to speak freely and help me to make the message clear and understandable. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for every blessing that you give to us. Thank you for your comfort, your presence, uh, the power that you give. We pray that you'll help us, Lord, to be in tune with you tonight. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. In 1950, an Australian writer named Paul Brickhill wrote a book about a true insider's account of the March 1944 mass escape from the German prisoner of war camp, Stalag Luft III, which in turn allied airmen who were prisoners of war during World War II. The book was entitled The Great Escape, which was made into a movie in 1963 and is one of the best war films made in cinema history. The goal of the Allied prisoners was to free 220 prisoners in one night. Three tunnels were dug named Tom, Dick, and Harry. At the risk of court-martial, the word tunnel was not allowed in the camp at all for secrecy's sake. On the dark night of the escape, the tunnel Harry was the only one that was used. And 76 British Allied officers and airmen were able to escape the prison camp in that night. The Nazis were able to recapture 73 of those men after weeks of searching and tying up a huge number of German troops. Under Adolf Hitler's order, the Gestapo executed 50 of these men, but three men did escape. As great as this escape was, there is a greater escape that needs to be made consistently by all Christians. It is listed in 1 Timothy 6, 11. The elements of this escape are twofold and they include fleeing and following. When we example the principle of fleeing, we will look at some things to not do or things to avoid. When we examine the principle of following, we will look at several things that we are to do or follow. So let's get started. Look at 1 Timothy 6, 11. We see, first of all, the principle of fleeing. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Paul refers to Timothy as a man of God. Guy King said, It may be a big thing to be a man of science, 
a man of business, a man of arts, and a man of the world, a man of letters. But oh, what are these in comparison with being a man of God? What an honor Paul gave to Timothy, but what a responsibility too. Let me say that if you are a Christian, you should make every effort to be a man of God or a woman of God. This world will definitely not call you a man of God if you don't live like one. And you should not be called one if you don't live a godly life. The spiritual principles addressed in this verse are not only for preachers, beloved. They apply to everyone who has trusted Jesus Christ as Savior and is an ambassador of the Alpha and Omega, a pilgrim of the Prince of Peace, a saint of the Son of God, a lover of of the Lamb of God, a child of Christ, a servant of the suffering servant, a believer of the bread of life, a laborer of the Lord, and a royal subject of the King of kings and Lord of lords. You know, beloved, the jellyfish is an incredible creature that was made by God. Did you know that it produces light inside its bell-shaped body and in its tentacles? I didn't know that until I studied this. When a predator comes close to the jellyfish, it turns its lights off and escapes by scooting away as fast as it can. Yeah, boy. If the predator continues the chase, the jellyfish switches to plan B. It's got a plan B. It tur- Get this. It turns on the blue light in its body and the white light in its tentacles. This guy's got color. He's got different light bulbs inside of him. Amen. When the attacker is very close, the jellyfish turns off the blue light inside its body and it takes off as fast as it can and it detaches its still glowing tentacles. He can detach those critters. The con- the tentacles continue to writhe and wiggle around in the water, distracting the predator. You know, fighter jets do the same thing by launching bright decoy flares in battle when missiles are fired at them. The actions of the jellyfish provide a picture of the meaning of the word flee in verse number 11. It's derived from the word fugo, which means to flee away, to seek safety by flight, to shun or avoid by flight something that is abhorrent or to escape. Uh, In fact, it is the word that produced our English word, fugitive. In the ancient Greek literature, the word was used to depict a lawbreaker who fled in terror from a nation where he broke the law. The reason that he fled so quickly is he wanted to escape capture and prosecution. A fugo... This word for flee, it's in the what they call the present tense, which indicates that Christians, especially men of God, they are to constantly run, avoid, shun, or escape behavior. 
and beliefs that are bad, brutal, blasphemous, barbaric, bogus, and beguiling. We're to run from that kind of behavior. Now, what are the things we are to flee? Well, these would include things that are mentioned in the previous verses of this chapter, which include temptations, snares, foolish and hurtful lusts, the love of money, erring from the faith, and piercing yourselves with many sorrows. Beloved, the hounds of hell are on the heels of the believer. We are to flee from the Scottish terrier of snares, the sheepdog of sorrow, the Saint Bernard of straying from God, and the Siberian husky of seduction. Run from them dogs, okay? We are not to delay by reasoning or negotiating with these temptations, especially in matters that deal with sexual immorality, which is destroying the lives and the testimony of many Christians. Now, this was a problem in the carnal church at Corinth. Notice what Paul said to these believers in 1 Corinthians 6, 18. He said, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Because of the destructiveness of sexual immorality, Paul issued a simple, forceful, powerful command on how to deal with this particular sin. He said, run! Don't pollute your palace. Beloved, don't pollute your life with per perversity. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit if you're saved. Fornication is the sin that affects your entire body and being. It has devastating spiritual consequences as well as emotional physical, and even mental consequences. When it comes to sexual sin, don't reason with it. Don't rationalize it. Just run. When Potiphar's wife trapped Joseph in a sexual situation, beckoning him to have sex with her, Joseph escaped by running as fast as he could from her. Don't forget that fleeing carries the idea of running continually and to continue fleeing from sin until the danger is past. It also means to avoid by running. It is just as important uh, to avoid the traps of sexual sin as it is from uh, if you uh, as it is to run from it if you find yourself in a situation of temptation that may rise. Avoid actions that lead to immorality. Now this would include wandering looks. Wandering eyes belong to those who are looking for men or women. They hunt for new sex partners. Peter described people like this. 2 Peter 2.14 Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Wandering eyes can get, can get you into trouble. You know, the story is told that in the year 1040 A.D., Earl Leofric of 
Mercia, one of the four all-powerful lords that ruled England under Canute, the Danish king, he decided he would raise the fees he levied on his tenants. One of the towns that he ruled was the town of Coventry. His wife, you might recognize her name. His wife's name was Lady Godiva. She pleaded with him to cancel those charges and he agreed to do so if she would ride naked on horseback through the streets of the town of Coventry. That is exactly what she did. But the grateful people agreed they would all stay inside of their homes and they would not watch the lady. However, there was one man, his name was Tom, who was a tailor by trade. He was so tempted by Lady Godiva's beauty that he did indeed peep through his window. He was said to have been blinded as a consequence of his actions, not by the townspeople, but by an act of God. And he has been known ever since as peeping Tom. That's where that came from. Wild behavior and immodest, sensual, and flirtatious gestures can get you into trouble quickly, and they should be avoided at all cost. Avoid wild parties. Stay out of taverns, drug parties, and dance clubs. The close contact, looks, touching, the sensual dress, the music, and the low lights stir the embers of emotion and they fan the flames of sexual passion. You would not play around with a rattlesnake if you came upon one while you walked on the path, would you? Most folks would not at all. They would get as far away as they could from that slivering, noisy little creature. Its bite is poisonous. Its bite is deadly. And the same is true for sensual, seductive men or women. Stay away from girls or guys who are like this. And there are a lot of them out there. You are catering, catering trouble for yourself if you do. Avoid their houses. Avoid their activities like a sailor at sea that avoids the rocks on the shore. Women say a great deal by the way they behave around men and by the way that they dress. Women who dress sensually and immodestly, they reveal what is going on in their hearts. Escape from women like these. Get away from them. Proverbs 5, 8 says, Remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house. You know, the largest escape and water evacuation in history took place on September 11, 2001. Does that sound familiar? That was a very dark day in our country's history. After the Twin Towers fell that day, the roads, the tunnels, and bridges were all closed in New York City. They shut the city down. The only way to get out of the city of Manhattan 
was by boat. People flocked to the river and they packed the boats to get out of there. They didn't know if another attack was coming. All they knew is those two towers had come down. There was smoke and debris everywhere. Some were so afraid. They were so filled with terror. They jumped into the river and they began to swim toward the shores of New Jersey. Realizing what was developing, the Coast Guard made a distress call to all boats to come to their aid and to evacuate the New Yorkers. Within minutes, hundreds of kinds of boats showed up to take the massive crowd of terrified people out of Manhattan. It was that day a great escape. It was called Operation Boat Lift. In comparison, Operation Dynamo at Dunkirk, France, removed 338,000 Allied troops from the beaches in nine days in World War II. Operation Boat Lift evacuated half a million people in nine hours from the docks. It took, it took nine days to get those men off Dunkirk. They got a half a million off in nine hours. It was incredible. It was intense. And it was important what they day, did that day in New York. But just as important and intense is escaping from, temp, from sexual temptations and snares. The best way to deal with temptation is not go toward it or to flirt with it. Avoid situations where temptation exists. Keep your head out of the mouth of the lion, symbolically speaking. If you find yourself in an unexpected sexual trap like Joseph, uh, what do you do? You run. That's what he did. He ran. And what you need to do is flee. Now, some people may think this. They say, well, they'll think I'm weird if I run away. I will not be part of the group. Well, you don't really want to be a part of that kind of group. Uh, nobody will like me. Well, you know what? The Lord will like you, okay? When you're wanting to be popular with an ungodly crowd, it shows there's something wrong with your Christianity or you're not a Christian at all. Beloved, we should not be catering to an ungodly world. Flee, flee away. Even if they think you're weird, just go ahead and flee. Go ahead and escape. Proverbs 4.14, Solomon said this, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Boy, he's made that pretty clear. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Flee also youthful lust. If we are to be successful in escaping or avoiding temptations, traps, and the trauma from sin, we not only need to flee those things that will defeat us, but also we need to follow some things that Paul has laid out for us. So let's look at some things that we are to follow. We see now the second part, the principle of following. He says, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Let me ask you a question tonight. Do you remember the Cabbage Patch Kids? How many of you all remember that? All right. During the 80s, it seemed that everyone had one of those pudgy, pillowy, round-faced, dimple dowels. I mean, people went crazy in the 80s over these stupid dowels. One lady said her trusty old grandpa had gone to the store, toy store 
at 5 o'clock in the morning. Now, at that time of year, it's dark at 5 o'clock in the morning. He went at 5 o'clock in the morning to wait in line for a dowel for her. Other folks said they got theirs on the black market. Each dowel had its own name tattooed on its bottom. The height of Cabbage Patch Kids' insanity was during the holiday season of 1983. I mean, folks, stores were mobbed. If you want to see what it was like, go on YouTube and they'll show you videos of what took place. When the doors were opened on these stores, it was like a stampede of cattle that stormed through the gate of a stockyard to escape to a pasture. People ran through the store. I mean, they didn't walk, folks. They ran. They sprinted through the, sto the store, trampling and fighting each other to get their hands on these coveted dolls. Now, beloved, it was an illustration of the epitome of greed as people were struck with the I've got to have it syndrome. They mowed down anybody that was in their way. Some folks went into hand-to-hand -hand combat to get their hands on one of those yellow boxes with shiny cellophane wrapping. This is the idea of the picture behind the word follow, <clears throat> which is from the word dioko. Now, what does it actually mean? The word follow used here means to pursue or chase in order to catch, to press onward or forward, to seek eagerly and earnestly with sincerity and great effort and enthusiasm to reach the goal. It was used to describe a runner who ran swiftly in a race to reach the finish line in victory and to win the prize. Beloved, the Bible says we are to pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. We are to make an, a, an intense effort to grow spiritually in these areas. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You're going to be working on it all your life. You're not going to arrive. You, when you think you have arrived, guess what Satan does? He pulls the route right under from, from beneath your feet. And you basically says, man, what happened to me? And you realize, you know what, maybe I haven't arrived, you know. Uh, Satan is very good at doing that. Being focused on chasing after these qualities will help us immensely to stay out of trouble and to escape a lot of problems, trouble, misery, and sorrow that are caused by stupid, sinful choices. Instead of trying to be like those who are carnal or unsaved, we are to strive to be like the Lord Jesus Christ in the way we live. And as Brother Ray said, God help us. Let's pray.